In this tutorial, I'm going to take you through a few of the new cool features in the latest version of Beatport Pro. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, Beatport Pro is some software that basically is allowing DJs to organize their music libraries in a much more effective way than software like iTunes allows, for example. It comes with lots of new cool features like advanced tagging options, syncing your tracks with the beat port so you can get the artwork, BPM information, that sort of thing. Basically, on the left-hand side here, you've got um, your collection uh, where you can sort stuff, as I said, into you know mixes I've got here, which will basically be you know DJ mixes, tracks, so your whole track list, stems, so you can add in stems from... You know, if you're doing remix competitions or anything like that, you've got stems from separate tracks in there, um, parts, uh, you know, sound effects, one shots and loops you can have. And you've got a playlist section here. So, I mean, the first thing to do would be to add a playlist, call it a genre name. Maybe if I was going for like Deep House, for example, it allows you to create a playlist folder. So I could make my main folder house. And then within that, I can drag the Deep House folder. So now it's kind of like in Serato Scratch Live or Serato DJ, where you've got basically a crate or a sub crate. One of the best things about this is the uh, waveform display at the bottom. So it's a lot better. You can actually click on a track and it will display the waveform. So if I double click on it, I've now got a full overview of the track at the bottom here. Now, at, on the right hand side here, when you've clicked on a track, you get lots of information about that track some of which may not be there for if you've downloaded it from Juno, for example. Um, you know, here I haven't got the artwork. So if I go sync with Beatport, this will bring up what it thinks that track is on the Beatport database. I mean, it is the same track. So if I tick that and then click Done, you'll notice now it's got the artwork here. You know, it'll give you any information that Beatport's got about the tracks. So that's really useful as well. You've got tags here as well. So genre tag. So if I click on here, you know, I've got lots of different tags that I could add to this track. Um, you know, I'd probably say it's hip hop as it's one of my well, remix of one of my tunes. Um, so, you know, I can just literally click done and now it's got those two tags on it. Now, I've also got an extensive list of mood tags here. So if I click on mood, you know, I can describe that track um, in, in what type of mood it is, obviously. And then it's going to be very useful for searching for stuff or creating filters later on. Uh, you know, vocal would be one that I'd probably attach to that. Um, not sure about sexy, but, you know, that's open to interpretation. Uh, let's go to funky. You know, I can just literally add loads of tags, click done. You know, and then it's got all these mood tags here uh, and so on for the, for the rest of it. So the vocal, if it's a male vocal, you know, the more you tag things like this, the more easily you're going to be able to find them. Because obviously they've got lots of uh, references to the sort of type of track that it is. So that's a very useful feature. Now, the filtering section is very useful as well. So I might want to find some tracks, you know, with some certain parameters, a bit like smart playlists in iTunes if you've used those or smart crates in Serato Scratch Live or Serato DJ uh, but if I just literally click up here add filter uh, you know I might want to search via a specific key or the energy level or a BPM so if I click BPM I can go right value is greater than 110 press enter and less than 130 enter so that's given me a list of tracks that fit those parameters you can keep adding these filters to refine your search so if i click add filter i might also want tunes that are between 110 and 130 in a specific key for example so if i click on that add 12b it's going to show me any tunes that fit those parameters in this case there aren't any because i haven't imported all of my tracks yet but um, if you then want to get rid of those filters and start again you can just you know click on here and press delete or you can save the filter type that you've created so you might have you know filtered things according to about three different parameters if you click save then it's going to save it as your own specific preset really so you can reload that at a future date another cool feature of beatport pro is the beatport store which is inbuilt into the software so you can access your beatport account and you know your dj charts that you follow or you know just buy music through the um, software so if I click on the arrow next to store click on new releases it's going to bring up a list of the new releases I can then click on a track uh, you know double click and there it is so I can preview stuff 
and then I can buy stuff within Beatport. So it's very useful. Can be a bit dangerous, you know. Probably not a good thing to go on if you're uh, late at night, you know, a bit drunk. You don't want to be uh, just <laughs> just to sort of. It makes it very easy, basically. So um, it's just a very useful thing because you can be searching for stuff within the software that you're organizing your music with you know it's even got your downloads there what you've downloaded so it's, it's a really cool feature now if you want to use what you've done in beatport pro in your digital vinyl system or dj software like tractor or serato there isn't sort of a complete synchronization but what you can do is export what you've done as an itunes database file uh, and then import that into itunes so that then Tractor Serato can read that information. So if I go to the preferences uh, here you, under the export tab, if you tick export library as an iTunes music library file, uh, and you can choose what items are going to be exported. So you know wh whether you just want the tracks or whether you want all of your entire library, um, and then you can basically add which metadata is going to be written to the comments. So you know you might want your well, the comment field in the comment section there. Uh, you know, you could add the the key or any any other sort of things that you want to show up in your comments in iTunes or Serato or Tractor. Yeah, so then you basically export that and then in iTunes import it. So you can just literally choose where it is, where you're going to save it, and then go into iTunes and then import that as your iTunes music library. And then it should have all your tags and everything you've done. Uh, so that's quite a useful thing. So in conclusion, this software has got some really cool features. It's really useful for keeping things organized, which is very important in this digital day and age when you know you can end up with thousands of tunes and not knowing where anything is. Uh, you know, the inbuilt store is really useful because it means you can be searching for music whilst also keeping stuff organized that you've already got. And the syncing option is one of the m my favorite things about it, which means you can kind of add in artwork and comments. You can even, um, you know, use stuff that other people have added to it so if you sync with beatport it might already have tunes you know someone else might have filled out all the information and put the mood tags and stuff you can choose to add those to your version of the track uh, so you know you can it's kind of collaborative effort really hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and catch you next time